Hello everyone and welcome to a skills showcase video in which I'll be showing you all of the skills currently available in game for each weapon and armor. The skill system of Dust Tower is designed with several things in mind. Above all we really want a lot of skills to be situational and have interesting uses that may not be obvious at first. What I'm outlining in this video is just a small segment of what we have planned for each weapon and armor. Later in development, players will choose from a pool of many skills to slot into their items to specialize their build to suit their playstyle. So we'll jump right in and start with the first weapon, the bow. The bow is designed to be the longest range weapon that excels in single target damage and crowd control. It's good for solo players and backliners in large fights. The bow's basic attack, Snipe, shoots an arrow that does more damage the further away the target is. The second attack, Puncture, is a charged arrow that deals a good deal of damage to multiple targets it passes through, also adding a damage over time debuff. The bow's third attack, Ensnaring Shot, is an AoE ability that slows the movement speed of an enemy within the target area. The bow's fourth and final attack, Bow Swing, is a short range bash attack that pushes back an enemy who gets too close. The second weapon we have is the Staff, which is a good support weapon that has the second highest range, some good AoEs, uh, crowd control and some basic healing. The Staff's basic attack is Magic Bolt, a single target ability that can splash in a small area if aimed at the feet of a target. The second ability is Healing Bolt, the reverse of the Staff's basic attack, healing a single target with the ability to splash if aimed at the feet. The amount healed will be reduced if used on the caster. The staff's third ability is Stasis, which immobilizes the target so they cannot move or cast spells. If the target is attacked during this time, however, the attacker will take significant damage. Stasis also interrupts any abilities being cast. The staff's final ability is Incinerate, a large AoE nuke that deals damage to several targets upon impact and burns targets who walk over the area for a short time. Our third weapon is the Scythe. The Scythe is a melee weapon that focuses heavily on point-blank damage and disrupting player movement. It is a strong weapon for a solo build and getting deep into enemy groups. The Scythe's basic attack, Sweep, deals damage to one target in a cone. The second ability, Ravage, deals significant damage in a cone AoE to multiple targets and roots them in place for a short time. If Ravage is used on a downed player, it will send them back to their spawn point. The side's third ability, Handle Bash, is a short range single target attack that stuns a single target for a short time, also interrupting any abilities being cast. The side's final ability, Hemorrhaging Chains, pulls a single target to the caster's location and heals the caster a small amount. The final weapon currently available in-game is the Totem. The Totem is a Witch Doctor kind of weapon that focuses on lots of overtime effects for both healing and damaging targets. It combines well with tactical kiting and is not really strong in spike damage. The Totem's basic attack, Muck, is a short range projectile that slightly snares a single target. The second attack, Poison, is a projectile that applies a damage over time effect to one target. The Totem's third attack, Revitalize, puts a heal over time effect on the target with reduced effectiveness if used on the caster. The Totem's final ability, Healing Splash, is a projectile that creates an AoE at the target location, healing players who stand inside it. And those are all the weapon skills currently in the game. I'll now move on to the armor sets. 
The first set of armor is the Splint Mail, which focuses on making the wearer very survivable and will allow them to protect themselves and other players using crowd control and buffs. The first Splint Mail ability, Battle Fury, makes the caster invulnerable to incoming damage for a short time, but also applies a minor damage over time effect for the duration. The second ability, Barge, pushes multiple targets away from the caster. The third splint ability is Transform Pain, which absorbs incoming damage from one attack and instead adds it to the caster's health. The last splint ability is Meditation, which sits the player down and gives them much higher health regen for the duration. Any incoming damage, however, will be increased also. The second armor set is the Robes, which focus on being an illusionist style of mage. This armor will offer various forms of magic trickery and nuke damage. The first Robe ability is Blink, which teleports the caster to their targeted location. The second ability, Deflective Shield, causes the next incoming projectile to bounce back at the attacker. The Robe's third ability is Aura of Healing, which heals targets around the caster in an area of effect. The Robe's last ability, Earthquake, after being charged, deals significant damage to multiple targets around the caster and pushes them away. The third armor set in Das Tal is the Leather, which focuses on Assassin-style abilities to allow the wearer to evade, trap, and ambush. The first ability, Sprint, increases the caster's movement for a short time. The second Leather ability, Come Here, pulls multiple targets in a cone area of effect towards the caster. The third ability, Tumble, negates the next incoming attack and instead teleports the leather wearer behind the caster of that attack. The last leather ability, Caltrops, sets an unseen trap at the feet of the caster, which will root a single target in place and apply a small damage over time. That is all the skills for the weapons and armors currently in game, but be aware we're working on more to be added in the future. I'll now finish the video with a small showcase of the mixtures of abilities being used in different situations. I hope this gave you some ideas and that you're excited to jump in game and try them out. Thanks for watching guys and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, <laughs>